Hello everybody. We got us a John Deere 4440 in here. We're working on the air conditioner. We're going to be putting the compressor, the dryer, expansion valve, flushing it all out, and just basically uh, redoing the air conditioner on it. Okay, customer brought this in. Said he thought his clutch was bad. It's AC clutch. I think he's got more problems with just, just the clutch. Well, that's the shaft that goes inside the compressor. So he's, we're going to have to rebuild this air conditioner system. Uh, we're going to put a clutch on our uh, compressor, expansion valve, the dryer. Expansion valve's up in the cab, up in the very top, and dryer's back here at the back of the tractor. Let's get start tearing it apart. First thing we're going to want to do is remove the old Freon, reclaim it. <clears throat> but in this case, when this hub shaft come out, that seal that's in front of this compressor, um, it lost all its Freon. So we don't have to reclaim this. Then we're going to remove this hose lines here at the back of the compressor. And then I'll remove this half inch bolt, this three quarter inch bolt here where this will swivel, take my belt loose right here. And I'll remove this half inch out all the way, remove this three quarter all the way. See if we can slide this compressor out, out of the way. This is a, uh, Nine sixteenths back here. Pay attention to which line goes on the rich side here. This out of the way. The plate basically. And these ends are different sizes, so I don't think you can get them wrong. Let's see if you can. Yeah, you too. You can get them wrong. Yeah, so you want to make sure. And it's probably stamped on this right here somewhere between the suction and the discharge. This would be the suction side. This would be the discharge size side. <clears throat> Let's get this hair out of, out of there. Then it's taking this off. And once we get this out, we can flip this over. You'll unplug this connector. There's a little ground wire on this one. It's hooked to this upper bolt right here. I'm hoping we can slide this forward to get it out. May not be able to. Hitting on a line down here. Let me get a little screwdriver. Not a real little one, but. line out of the way. Okay, we got this compressor off. And we'll just transfer this bracket and this bracket over to the new compressor when we get ready to put it on. There's 
two big bolts to hold the top of this cab cover. They have to be removed. A crescent wrench size. Here on top of the cab, we've got two bolts, one on each side that has to be removed in order to lift this thing up. There's a prop handle under here that'll hold it up for you. Now you're going to have to remove all these Phillip head screws that's up here. It's all the way around this top panel here. Remove them all out. Okay, we got this cover unbolted. I've got it slid off. This is the evaporator core. That's the filter for the cabin. Um, if you're going to clean it or replace it, you have to do it from the in you have to take it, remove it from the inside. That expansion valve sits right here. This is the lower line. And it's uh, we're going to have to get all this insulation tape off of this to be able to get to it. So we'll get this cut off here and get this expansion valve removed. All right, I'm up here on the cab. This is a better look at that expansion valve. Um, this was the, uh, the old AC tape, I, is what I call it, I don't know exactly what it's called. And I cut off, I mean, might as well go ahead and get you a box of this AC tape. It's not that high, that way you can go back with new tape around that, get that all insulated. Um, I think somebody's been in this before. This bulb, this temperature bulb, was just like that. And I believe that needs to be contacting this uh, suction line. This is the bigger line up here. But anyway, this has got three connections. It's got this little connection right here for this temperature bulb. It's got one here on the lower and one here where it goes into the evaporator let's see if we can just remove it real quick here okay take this bigger line off of the evaporator core because we're we're going to flush this thing out real good so i'm just going to flush all the lines and evaporator condenser all that individually um now would be a good time too to blow this evaporator core out with uh, compressed air. Just don't want to damage these fins too much while you're doing it. Um, this is the expansion valve that's been removed. I'm at the back of the tractor now. Removing the dryer, so you're just going to remove both these lines on both the ends. Loosen up this bracket nut. Just slide this dryer out. You notice the flow on this thing. Showing you what direction the flow should be. Okay, now I'm going to start flushing this system out. I'm, I just have a um, little pressurized container here that I use. I'll pressurize this container with air and then I'll shoot it through with this air nozzle here. You can buy this flush in a pressurized cans. Just pour some in here. A little 
cap one here. And then I'll just take an air chuck, pressurize it, start flushing. Okay, I'm going to flush this condenser first. This line here, I didn't remove. I'm going to come on the back side of it here, flush through this way. And I'm flushing a full can of that flush through this condenser. This, the condenser is going to get most of your trash from your compressor in it. So we want to make sure it's really clean. Pressurize my canister here a little more. And get to stay in place. It will make a mess. A little more pressure. I'm just looking at it, see how clean it looks coming out of there. It's looking pretty clean. Well, that's a full can of that flush right there. <clears throat> Next thing is we need to get as much as that old flush out of out of the system as we can. So we'll just put pressed air in it. Just kind of modulate that air to begin with. We don't want to put too much pressure on it. I'm just looking at the color of it. So the first is coming out. Make sure it's nice and clean. Well, you'll just you'll just continually just keep blowing that out and drying it out. If it looks like it needs more flush, run through it. Put some more flush through it. I think one can pretty much clean that enough. But I'll get that completely dry. Then I'll do I'll do all the lines and I'll do the um, evaporator on the top. This line will go back to where the dryer hooked to it. So we'll just shoot some in it. Okay, next I'll flush this evaporator core out. And I've, I've attached a, um, a hose to this bottom tube of this evaporator core. I put a little clamp on it. When I start flushing this, if you don't do that, you're gonna have a cab full of that flush. Well, I'll stick some rags and stuff under here to catch any excess that comes out. And then I'll just put my flush nozzle on this top one, flush it out down to this tube into a bucket that I've got set up down here. 
Yeah, you can use an uh, old garden hose. I was going to use this old garden hose laying down here, but this hose right here seems like it's going to work a little bit better. Next, we'll flush this line here that hooks up to the um, this upper evaporator core tube, and it goes down to the compressor. Next, we'll run flush through it. And then the last line is going to be the line that hooks up to the expansion valve. It's in here. I'm just pulling this right here out of this uh, slot, and I'm going to Put flush down in this end. And it'll go down to where the uh, dryer hooked into. That'll be the last line. Now at this point, we've we've flushed it all out. We flushed the lines and condenser and the evaporator. We blowed them all out. They're all good to dry. Cleaned everything. So we'll go back to putting the parts on, the new parts. Um, The new compressor, this one says it comes with three ounces of oil in it. But we're going to need probably, I'll have to double check, but I think it's eight and a half ounces of oil. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a couple ounces in this dryer. Uh, I'll put a couple of ounces in the evaporator core. And then uh, maybe an ounce in a, in a condenser and then whatever's left I'll put back in the compressor. Uh, then you want to just pump it down, evacuate it, charge it up. Uh, well, usually I believe five or six cans of Freon does it pretty good on them. Um, on this dryer, this new dryer, it does come with a, a, a sight glass. So you can probably go by it when you're charging it up. But <clears throat> that'll be real bubbly as you're charging it. Inside that little window there. And once it gets full, that'll clear up. The old one didn't have that on it. So that comes in handy when you're trying to figure out how much Freon to put in it so you don't put too much in it. <clears throat> you also want to look at the gauges because this has been converted from R12 to 134, and sometimes it doesn't take as much 134 as it does the R12. <coughs> anyway, you just go back the way you took everything off, get the system all cleaned out. Okay, so we got it, got it all together, it's blowing cold. Um, end up putting about 10 and a half ounces of oil in it. The compressor I got was recommending PAG uh, 46. That's what I put in it. Five cans of Freon, filled it up. Um, went back to this little sight glass back here. And uh, when I got five cans in it, that was nice and clear. And that's a, them are good to have if you need to know if you're low on Freon. You can shine a light down in here in this glass and if it's bubbling, got bubbles in it, then you know you're low on Freon. Good little quick check on them. So there we go, folks. We're back in business. Things working like it should. I uh, hope this helps someone out. Thanks for watching.